patience probably might be the most requested of all the virtues and the things that we've been asking for. Even more than faith. We live in a world that everything needs to be now. And I want things now. So when you're hungry, that's why fast food is so popular, by the way. Because when you want to eat now, you can't wait for food to cook or no pot. It's easier to go down the road and just buy something. And when you want to move from one place to the next, it might be a short distance, you know. But you will take a car that by the time the car changes into second gear, you reach where you're going. But you'd rather take that than walk it because you want to meet there now. Because children want to grow up and they can't wait to grow up and mature, they do adult things now. So they get pregnant, they're living life uh, in relationships, and they are in school. And the artist said, why can't they wait? Because we are such impatient people. So I want to hopefully share with you today some words that would encourage you to become more patient in your life. The grounded text comes from the book of Peter that we looked at in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 5 to 9, a scripture that we have been looking at for over the past couple weeks. Where Peter said, and gave the advice, this is how you can ensure that you remain a Christian and you remain faithful to God. He said, and besides this, what I've just mentioned before, 1 2 Peter 1, 5 to 9, giving all diligence, add to your faith. Do not just believe something. Add to it. And when you add to it, you add to your faith virtue. We said virtue is goodness. The way you are, who you are. Not doing good things, but being good. And good people do good things. But if we go about doing good, good things only, bad people do good things. But they're not necessarily good. So, add to faith virtue. And to virtue knowledge, you must know. You must have information. And the Bible says, and to knowledge temperance, self-control. This is something we dealt with last Tuesday. And today, and to temperance, patience. And then we talk about unto patience is godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, um, it says charity. For if you do these things and they are in you, not just reside in you, but they are bound. Many of them, it, it just grows and multiplies in you, and it abounds. The Bible says, they make you that you will neither be barren, nor unfruitful, which means you're not lacking in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his sin. Patience. What is patience? This is what patience is. There are two words that are used in the Bible to determine patience. I wouldn't attempt to call the Greek and the Hebrew in it and so on, so I'll just go straight with the English. Patience is calm waiting under stress. Patience is calm waiting under stress. So there are things that are bothering you that you will hold your peace and your calm. You will not become anxious for anything. That's what the Bible says. Be not anxious in anything. The Bible says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Which means, while you're waiting on God, let courage be inside of it. Now, that is a tough one. While you're stressing, you're waiting calm. How can you stress and be calm at the same time? The other word is long-suffering. Which in most times, when the Bible refers to patience, and it talks about long-suffering, it attributes it to whom? God. Long-suffering is putting up with something you don't agree with for a long time. God is long-suffering. When he watch us and he see how we behaving and he see the kind of thing we carry on with and the life that we living, God is patient, long-suffering. He's putting up with us for a long time. But here's what happens whenever God puts up with us for a long time. We think that God has overlooked it. 
the life that we have and the things that we are doing but God said grieve not the Holy Spirit grieve not the Spirit for my spirit shall not always strive with man there is going to be a day that I will cut it off so don't get too comfortable and think that God is so long-suffering that his long-suffering means it is endless suffering no sir so God is going to bring it back to an end so how do I have patience calm wait while I am stressing I don't know how you operate whenever you are under stress uh, uh, because when some people are under stress they're anxious for everything and they are nervous and they are complaining and they uh, and they always pointing fingers at who causing the stress and, and they're blaming the husband, the wife, the co-workers, the boss and everybody else around them, the drivers, the economy, the government, everything that they would be able to get a blame. But calm waiting says, this is a stressful situation, but I know God will come through. And so I will give God the hard work. Of working this thing out because I can't work it out and I will just wait patiently on the Lord now when we get into a state that we have grown and matured to that point by adding to our knowledge and here's why probably they put it after knowledge and to knowledge patience and to patience self-control self-control and now we are talking about patience after self-control because after you've done all of those things I know God I know how God always comes through for me and because I know God always comes through for me I will control what I say I will control my emotions and I will wait upon the Lord so when we are going through our relationship problems and our marital issues and our relationship with our families, uh, our, our parents, and our uncles, and our brothers, and our sisters, and everybody that we're going through all the challenges with. We don't get into the cut and thrust of everything. What we do is we patiently wait on God. Because we are telling ourselves, I know God. And I know God is up to something. I don't know what he's up to. But I know that he's up to something. And whatever it is he's up to, he's going to deliver me sooner or later and so I will wait looking out for this deliverance from God but if you don't know God you can't expect God to show up because you never had an experience with God where God showed up in your life and that is why you need an experience with God you need to be able to see God work in your life in so many ways that you can be able to start relying upon God and experiencing God in a powerful powerful way and so therefore we wait patiently upon the Lord long suffering is God we wait calmly in anticipation so how do we get patient we're talking about patience and we're talking about that we need to be patient with God but how do we get patient well patience it, it, that is the sort of depressing part about how you get patience actually so, so don't expect no good news in this one here Romans chapter 5, 1 to 4. This is how we get patience, the Bible says. Therefore, being justified by faith. Because remember he said, add to your faith, virtue. Right. So being justified by faith, we now have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we go there. We have faith. By whom also we have access by faith into grace. So now that we have faith, we can now call upon God's grace, unmerited favor in our lives. Wherein we stand. We have faith. We stand in grace because grace is applied to us. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory. Listen to what we glory in. We glory in tribulation. How do I get faith? tribulation what is tribulation tribulation is great trouble and suffering Lord give me patience well it's coming <laughs> watch out because it's coming because that is great no notice it is not just trouble it is great trouble 
So that's how we get patience. But, but, but notice he says, we glory in it. Because when we see tribulations and trouble, knowing that tribulation does what? Work patience. Wow. So when I get fired and bank write me to take my house and I start to see some of these places that I took my furniture out on higher purchase come taking back things and my neighbors laughing me and say, boy, look, you couldn't even afford the thing where you take it out for. And people start heckling me and so on. And I have to now park up my car because I have no gas. I can't afford gas to put in it. I now have to take my children out of school for two months because I don't even have clothes to be able to give them to, to, to go to school with and so on. And I'm going through this great tribulation. God says rejoice. Glory. Because it gives you patience. How do you get patience over that? Because you know this will not last forever. Now that is easier said than done. You can't get this patience if you come into church once in a blue moon i promise you that you can't get this if you read in your bible on a sunday only when you come here and you hearing god's word and now starting to just be thankful that you hear a nice sermon on a sunday you can't get this level you will only be able to remain in the level of faith if you plan to live your life in that way but the people who can handle real stress in life, who can handle troubles in life, are people who are going from faith to faith. And that's why when trouble comes, trouble can only be survived by strong people. So it says, therefore, that knowing this, that the tribulation works patience, and patience experience. That is what patience gives us. Experience. So I, we have been through some stuff. We've been through some rough areas in life. And because we've been through it, we know that we can come out of it. Yeah. Met a gentleman in Jamaica. He was already in his 60s, I think going into his 70s. And, and I was chatting with him. And he told me, he recently, couple, about a year, two years ago, went bankrupt. Yeah? Lost everything, lost his goods, lost his tractor, lost his business with the hardware and just lost everything. And I said, but you don't seem too perturbed. He said, it's not the first time I lose business, you know. <laughs> so the confidence he has is because he has experience. Yes. He's been through trouble already. It's not the first time he's been through trouble. And he said, the same way how I got it back and I lost it again, I can get it back. Yeah, yeah, that's what experience says. The reason why people collapse and faint under pressure is because they have no experience to fall back on. The reason why David could challenge a Goliath is because he had an experience with a bear. And so therefore, you need your experience and therefore rejoice when your experience comes, especially when the small little puny challenges come your way. Tell yourself where God growing me some way some little things that we complain about you ask us if we be really ready for tribulation we're ready for tribulation again he said patience experience and experience produces hope and so therefore hope makes perfect here's what the bible says in james chapter 1 verse 2 to 4 my brothers and sisters you will have many kinds of trouble that's what he says in the translation. You have many kinds of trouble. But this gives you a reason to be very happy. Rejoice in your troubles. I, I think the, the translation King James said, the trying of your faith works patience. No, you know that when your faith is tested, you learn to be patient in suffering, not after suffering inside of the suffering if you let that patience work in you the end result will be good you will mature and you'll be complete you will all you will be all that god wants you to be suffering is good so i just want to tell you some of the things that we need to be patient with and then we're going to close number one you need to be patient with people hello let me hear an amen 
<laughs> uh, there are some people that you know that you need to have some patience with. Yeah. Some of us married to them. <laughs> you see? Some of, <laughs> some, of, some of us working with some of these people. So we need to ask God, God give me a double portion because the kind of people I'm around, I don't need normal patience. I need double portion. I need to, re you're ready to rain patience upon me because I need to work with some people. So therefore, this is what the Bible says, James chapter 1 verse 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy. There it goes again. Glory in, in tribulation, now joy in temptation. Joy when you fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, and let patience have her perfect work, and that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. That's the, the same verse in the King James translation. There are people, to me, the only purpose they are in our lives <laughs> is to teach us patience. <laughs> Because I can't see of any other reason some people cross our life. So we have to conclude, is God sending them as tribulation for us? They seem to get joy in rubbing us the wrong way. They seem to have a mission to put us on the run. And that person, we have to start rejoicing in God. Because if we can conquer this person, we are able to grow a notch more in patience so we need to learn to be patient with some people who is it that you need to practice some patience with who is it that calls you and sets up your day who is it that always seem to trigger you that whenever they start to talk you just get vexed who is it that says the wrong thing and they seem to know what wrong thing to say to get you upset you know there are some people they seem to study us and they know how to be able to rub us on the wrong side they are skillful people. If they should be qualified, they should have a master's in rubbing us the wrong way. So those people, who is that person that we need to be able to say, Lord, 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 give me patience, a double portion of patience. Call them by name in your prayer. God, I want you to teach me your way how to handle so and so. Who is that worker? Who is that boss? Who is that person that brings pressure upon you? That makes you go home frustrated? Who is that person that drains your energy and causes you to be upset at the end of the day? That you need to ask God, don't take away the person. Just add me patience. Because we go the subtraction side. Don't go the subtraction side. Go the addition side. Give me a double portion of patience, Lord. Because if I could deal with this person, then I could deal with a lot of other people. Yeah. God help me to have patience with other people. Second, God help me to have patience in situations. Because people is one thing, but my circumstances is another. You see, because there are things that we go through in life. And when we ask in God for help and for deliverance, God is going to answer one out of three ways. When you ask God for something, God is going to say, yes, that's the part we like. Sometimes God says, no, that's the part that we say. Well, probably we should go to God again and find out whether he really meant no. You see, whenever, you know, there was somebody in the Old Testament that asked God whether they should go up and fight against people. And God said no. And he said, well, let me go and ask God again because he might, it, it, might be, it might not be the right answer that he wants. So, sometimes we want an answer from God. And God is going to deny us and say no. But then sometimes God says, wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold up. And hold up for what? You know, there are some people want to get married, want to settle long in a relationship and so on. And they, 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 we like to hear God say, yes, yes, yes. So there may be some people on their Facebook now this morning and saying, yes, I want to get married. I want to get involved in a relationship. I want to settle down with a family life. And God may be saying, neither yes, no, no. But God may be saying, wait, 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 wait. Uh, and, but we say, but God, are you really watching how old I'm getting? 
you're noticing me, God? And so on. And God's still saying, wait. Wait. And sometimes we rush God and we get into situations that we shouldn't. Sometimes it is also um, our spending. There, there are things that we need to just wait and if we we would not spend some wasteful money sometimes if we just listen to god because god may be saying yes you need it but we but you see the word sale is a four letter bad word <laughs> that causes us to tell ourselves i sure god don't oh, want me wait because the, the sale will pass you see but god may be saying wait hold on you know you could have in your account five thousand dollars amen amen <laughs> amen if god would just put a five thousand dollars inside of there and you have five thousand dollars in your account and you want to buy something but it costs eight thousand dollars you might tell yourself i want it no but i don't have it so let me go to the bank and give them my five and let them give me eight when you now have a loan that is going to run for one and a half years at an interest that you're paying them probably ten thousand dollars in the end when if you had waited you might have been able to get some funds that god will bring from nowhere that would have allowed you to purchase the same thing cash and all nobody so it may take a couple months more but is the patience to wait I, I remember you know one of the things i've been young and so you know sometimes you see a nice car on the road and you want to buy a car and you go and borrow money from every family you have yeah. <laughs> you like jaya ja, ja, know what i don't <laughs> Yeah, I, I know about that. I've, I've owned no less than 23 vehicles in my life already. Yeah. So I know about that. And all of them old cars. Only one new vehicle I've ever owned in my life. <laughs> so I know sometimes you see a car and you say, that car looks real nice, boy, and so on. And you tell yourself, you want that car. But you know, if you had waited long enough after you buy that car, you see a better car in the same series that you could have had had you just waited but now your, your hands stop patience is something that is so difficult to be able to deal with especially when we are always hustling God and in many times the situation that we are in financially if you check it out is an issue of patience not an issue of, of little bit of money is not being able to wait upon God to help us to work out some of these things so that's two so the third part that I want us to recognize is patience with ourselves. Patience with ourselves. Uh, you know, sometimes we are we, a little too hard on ourselves. We're trying. And whenever we mess up, we become very discouraged. One of my older brothers used to play, try, practice playing pan on milk tins and try to beat out a tune and he's trying to beat out the tune without making a mistake and he'll be going good and sometimes when he just comes near to the end he make a mistake and he becomes very impatient and sometimes he just kick all the pan away because he's so so impatient you know because there are sometimes that he just has to be patient with himself and just tell himself okay so i made a mistake let me go again and sometimes we are really trying so hard to live this Christian life that we come to the point that seeing that we're not making it and we're not living in that perfect life, we think that probably this is not for me. And we give up. Patience with yourself says, I have my flaws. And so if I've done wrong, I'm going to gather myself again, go to God, confess my sins, and go again. So people stay away from church sometimes because of guilt, you know. Because they know inside of their life they're not living right. 
when what you need to do is recognize it still come out because you may hear a word that is going to rescue your soul and you have a chance now to start all over again be patient with yourself and finally be patient with God be patient with God God works on timing God is not pressured by your urgency God works on timing so the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 1 to everything you included there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven that is everything you can think about God is going to work with a timing it's amazing how people meet in relationships long before you even thought of having a boyfriend or a girlfriend God gave birth to your partner long before you thought about it because God working out his timing but your meeting and crossing of your path need to be well timed so you may find that you all are both going up over the years teenager adolescent you're going up into adults you start to work and so on but that person is still going still going through issues to shape them and bring them into line to the person who you need to be and the person that they need to be and you could find that somebody for you die in trinidad or in some other island and you are now taking a flight to go to the funeral that person is taking the same flight to go to an interview and it so happened that the airline put you all in seats next to each other and in flying you all start to talk exchange numbers and from there when you check 12 years later you're married with children with somebody you thought you met accidentally a border flight timing of God but God you might have been asking God for this spouse 10 years prior and God waited 10 years for the right time to bring that together no that's awesome that is something that I just that just blows my mind as to how God does that you might be asking for a job and this happens sometimes somebody's asking for a job or a promotion on the job and here's what happens sometimes just when you thought the pressure that you are going through in your life because you needed a particular job or a promotion somebody drops dead but when you say why must that be such a gruesome thing i don't know god is a mysterious god he does do things in a strange way and they need somebody to fill that post timing says you might be the person